What's going on everybody, Trey for Payback in the building, coming at you guys with the final part to day eight. I'm gonna make this intro really, really quick because I don't like holding you guys up. Just wanna say thank you all so much once again for sticking with me and uh, for continuing to watch these because once again, as I'm watching it and I'm learning more and more about the trial, I see just how difficult it must have been to experience this as it was happening and to see just how terrible it was for the actual community that dealt with this. So thank you all so much for sticking with me and I appreciate every last one of you. And before we hop into the video, I just want to really quick say thank you to everybody that donated. So thank you so much again to Rebecca Reams for another $10 donation. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for clearing up the Jeopardy thing. I was saying that that music should really be playing when Daryl does these like long pauses. By the way, I I edited a lot of those out in this video but thank you so much again to Rebecca Reams thank you to Joan Coles for a $10 donation I really do appreciate it and I'm sorry if I didn't say your name properly like I say this every video I'm really bad at pronouncing names I really do appreciate it thank you and last but not least thank you so much to Lori Dupree for a $10 donation as well guys I really do appreciate this and as always no one has to send me a single thing but if you would like to donate to the community of Waukesha there are links pinned at the top of the comment section so if you want to donate to the victims and the community itself there are resources down there for you to do that and one last thing I want to apologize about the name that I've been using for judge I called her judge Jennifer all throughout this trial a lot of people I saw some comments people were upset about that it's judge Daro. So I will be calling her that from now on. Part of the reason I was calling her Judge Jennifer as well, there are some names that are tough for me to pronounce because like I'm from the South. Daro is one of them. I have to say it really slow. Like I don't know if anybody's picked up on this, but I actually struggle sometimes to say Daryl's name because <laughs> if the countryness comes out and I say it too quickly, it sounds really weird. So I'm going to make sure I refer to her by her proper name. Thank you all so much and I hope you enjoy the video. Statement called next witness. Thank you. The state calls Officer Garrett Luling. All right, we got another officer coming up. And my notes are still not open. Per usual. Good afternoon, officer. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is up a riser to my right. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. All right. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. All right, I'm interested to Can see you what- please state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Sure. First name is Garrett, last name is Luling. First name is spelled G-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. My last name is spelled L-U-L-I-N-G. Okay, I was just gonna say, so far it's been interesting to see the perspective from each officer because they haven't been like the types of perspectives that I would imagine they have because some of them were off duty and they were just, you know, walking around such as the officer that was walking with his daughter and he had a completely different thing that he saw. He saw Daryl the moment he actually ditched the vehicle. And um, I believe there was another officer, right? That was off duty that was actually like there with his family or something. See now uh, my memory's starting to get a bit foggy with this, but now I'm just interested to see like each officer's perspective you, with this. Go ahead, turn it for you right now. Just to see what it is Thank they may judge. have seen. Uh, good afternoon, Officer Luling. Good afternoon. Sir, I want to direct your attention to the date of November 21 of 2021. And uh, you are aware of the Waukesha Christmas Parade taking place that afternoon. Is that correct, sir? Jason, we Correct, I was working on um, well, Hold on. Um, I understand it's leaving. There is some leeway when it's just laying foundation. So it's overruled, and the witness may answer, and the answer he provided may stand. Go ahead. First Correct, question. I was assigned to work the Christmas parade. All right. At some point in time, were you aware of uh, injuries to those involved in the parade, sir? Objection, Lee. Yes. Overruled. Make sure you wait till I roll on the objection, please. Sorry. And at some point uh, later that evening, were you aware of a suspect being in, taken into custody in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street? Objection, Lee. 
Plural. You may answer. Yes. All right. I want to direct your attention to that time frame, please. Did you respond to that area, sir? Yes. Where did you go? I traveled. I was initially parked setting up a perimeter near the area of Southwest Avenue in Wood. Um, when I heard a specialist climb come over the air indicating that there's a subject going door to door in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street, and then traveled north and to Elizabeth Street, which is right off of Southwest <coughs> Avenue, correction, Northwest <laughs> Avenue at that point. And I traveled westbound on Elizabeth Street looking for the subject. Uh, this what did is you the, see when you arrived in that the area? The other arresting officer. Initially, as I came to the area, I observed an officer from the village of McGuanago, an officer from the Big Bend Police Department, as well as an officer from the, Delphi, the city of Delfield Police Department in the area. I traveled westbound spotlighting uh, residents in the general area looking for the subject. Initially, I didn't see anyone. Um, so I made it to the end of the streets, at which point I began to double back. I briefly stopped and spoke with uh, some civilians in the area just saying, hey, if you see anyone, call the police department, let us know. And as I traveled back eastbound on Elizabeth Street in the 500 block, I observed the three officers from those aforementioned police departments uh, detaining one subject at gunpoint in the front lawn of 553 Elizabeth Street. Right. You had uh, indicated there were people out and about, c civilians? Yes, there was some people out on their porches or patios. Uh, I had my lights going on my, my squad, so that drew attention for people to kind of look out and call out to me as I was making a Y turn. Do you know about what time of day this was? Uh, not off the top of my head, it was, it was dark out though. Okay, as in relation to when the incident at the parade occurred to when you're arriving on Elizabeth Street. Can you give us a rough time frame? Um, leading. Uh, 45 minutes an hour okay. at the max. Okay. So when you roll up on 553 Elizabeth Street, tell me what you saw. So as I was coming back eastbound, I could see the lights from the other officers illuminating a subject on the ground. Uh, I immediately pulled up, parked my squad, got out and began running uh, to where the officers were. And as I uh, came up to where they were in the front lawn area between the residence and the sidewalk, they were in the midst of handcuffing and detaining a subject on the ground. The subject that was being handcuffed and detained on the ground, you see that person in the courtroom here today? I do, yes. Are you able to identify him? Yes. Would you like him to remove his mask in order to do so, sir? Please. Okay. Mr. Brooks, if you please. Thank you. Look at how absolutely terrified he looks. Right here, he actually does look like a small child. It's actually weird. <laughs> so the subject I saw <laughs> like was Daryl Brooks seated at the defendant's table wearing a dark colored suit with a gray shirt. Now you said he was already on the ground in the process of being handcuffed. Is that <coughs> yes. Did no you objection. Did any officer <laughs> slam Mr. Brooks to the ground? No objection. Hearsay. <coughs> no. Did you see any use of force directed towards Mr. Brooks by any police officer on the scene at that time? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. No. Okay, I feel like this is going to be another situation where like the officer is not having it at all. Because I noticed at the very beginning when Daryl was trying to do the little objection game like right out the gate, he kind of gave him like a little side stare and Daryl immediately stopped. <laughs> so it's just like, um, and I saw a lot of this in the comment section as well. I was like, oh, he stopped objecting all of a sudden. I wonder what that was. Everyone told me, well, dude, he's intimidated. He's intimidated by the officer. And uh, she pretty much just has him terrified to like continue doing that. I feel like that's going to be the same situation here because he's already annoyed. He's giving him little side stares and, you know, Daryl's going to back down if he's like Did you intimidated. approach Mr. Brooks? Yes. Did you speak to him? Yes. What did you say? I asked him to identify himself at that time. He said Brooks. I can ask him to identify himself. He identified himself as Daryl Brooks. That's the name he gave you, identifying himself. Yes. Objection. That's not what he says in the video. 
Um, overruled? Yes. All right. Did that name have any significance when you heard it, sir? <clears throat> yes. Why? I knew prior to responding to that location that Officer Moss, who had initially located the car, had uh, made a cursory check of the vehicle. During that time, he found documentation belonging to a Daryl Brooks. Okay. At some point, do you recall um, getting Mr. Brooks up off the ground? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. Um, overruled, you may answer. Yes. Tell us what you remember at that point. Um, off our Dale Brooks was picked up off the ground or assisted off the ground. He was then escorted to the front of my mark squad where I searched him. At this point, are you probably the only officer from the city of Waukesha Police Department on the scene? Objection, speculative. Overruled, you may answer. Yes, I was the only officer from the city of Waukesha at that time. And the other officers were providing mutual aid to the city of Waukesha Police Department? Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. That's what you all were telling me in the comments. Being the squad from the city of Waukesha and the parade occurring in Waukesha, did you take custody of Mr. Brooks? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled, you may answer, sir. Yes. Prior to placing him in your squad, was Mr. Brooks searched? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled, you may answer. Yes. Tell us what you remember about that, sir. So I searched Mr. Brooks during which time I found some cards in his right pocket that had his name on it, as well as a black Ford key. When you say some cards, what can you describe those further, please? Uh, debitor credit cards. All right. I'm going to show for you an item that's been marked as Exhibit 176. It's been previously admitted. I'd uh, ask that it be displayed for the jury again, Your Honor. Oh, permission granted. Objection. You see the photograph on the monitor in front of you, sir? Yes. Uh, do you see yourself in that photograph? Yes. Where are you? I am the officer with is back to the the camera with police written across a fluorescent yellow and orange vest. Do you recall what you were doing at this point in time? Um, at that point it looks like I'm buckling Daryl Brooks into the back of my squad All or right. placing him into the back of my squad. And you see uh, a set of hands on the right side of the photograph, sir? Objection leading. <laughs> Overruled. Yes. You see the objects that are being held in those hands, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes. Is that consistent with what you just testified as to the items you removed from Daryl Bo Brooks before placing him in your squad? Objection. Overruled. You said to me and called that name and Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes. It's a little blurry, but can you circle for us the uh, key that you indicated you found? With my finger, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. And because it's a little hard to see, can you describe that key as you recall? Hmm. As I recall, the key was a single key. I don't recall there being any keychain to it. Uh, it was a fob type that had some buttons and it had a Ford emblem on it that indicated that it was a Ford key. Okay. What did you do with these items after you, uh, well, strike that. I <clears throat> should ask a better question. Did you eventually get these items back from the officer who was holding them? Yes. And what did you do with them? Uh, I took custody of them until they were ultimately turned over to Detectives Stern and Detectives Carpenter. All right. Do you remember Mr. Brooks asking you why he had been detained? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. Yes. You may answer, sir. Yes. Do you remember specifically what he said? I recall that he had questioned why the police were handcuffing him or why the police were detaining him. Did you reply? Yes. What did you tell him? I told him that he was being detained as he matched a description of a subject involved in a crash in the downtown area. Did you say anything about the parade? No. Okay. <clears throat> I got a feeling that's something that Daryl is going to try to spin to say, oh, you, you didn't arrest me for the purpose that you actually said you, uh, I don't even know how to, <laughs> I worded it completely wrong but you didn't specify to me exactly why 
you arrested me because he'll he'll basically say it like this is it fair to say that a crash is different from running through a parade so how could you say that that's the reason that you arrested the suspect because he's not going to say me <laughs> but he'll just word it in that way and try to make it seem as if that's like a valid question like what no it, it definitely fits thank you officer i don't have any other questions for you here we go any cross <laughs> yes go ahead I'll make sure to edit out these pauses again. Do you recall well. speaking with uh, Officer Moss that evening? Not distinctly. There might have been some radio traffic between me and him at one point. So it'd be fair to say that radio traffic, you guys spoke. I can't tell you if I had direct contact with him or if I just recall him airing particular pieces of information. Do you recall any? particular bit of information that was aired by Officer Moss? You're going to have to be more specific. Do you recall Officer Moss airing that he had spoken with a potential eyewitness who indicated that they had observed numerous suspects run from the vehicle? Objection, hearsay. Grounds? Um, he, loves, answer. he loves these types I of I recall Officer questions. Moss airing that to the officers responding in general that there may have been more than one suspect that had ran from the vehicle. He loves teetering on the line of hearsay. And do you recall if that, if that air information? Wait a second, back that up. You just stated that there may have been any reason why the air information said it had been, that he had, had spoken to a potential eyewitness? Objection, hearsay, and Rounds. false or speculation as to the words of another person. Rounds. Sustained. Rephrase your question. He probably won't rephrase it. Do you recall any air information of description? Yes. Do you recall what they were? Objection, hearsay. Grounds. You're asking him the description of the suspect leaving the vehicle? Yeah, what, he, what he heard aired. Overruled, you may answer. I recall there being a description of a either a light-skinned black male or po possible Hispanic male wearing a white shirt, as well as the potential of a white male with curly brown hair. Do you recall what you did after hearing that air information? Yes. What did you do? I responded to Officer Moss's general location, at which point he requested that a perimeter be set up. So I responded further south to set up a perimeter to attempt to keep those people within the confines of that perimeter. Do you recall what, uh, what general area that was? You're going to have to be more descriptive to what general area are we talking about here? Uh, the area the area where Officer Moss was. Officer Moss was at 338 Maple. Is that the area that you responded to? Generally, yes. What do you mean by generally? I was driving to the residence when he asked that a perimeter be set up. And do you recall where you set that perimeter up? Yes. And where was that? It was loosely around that residence as well as to the south and to the west. What do you mean by loosely? Which streets were to the south and to the west? Numerous streets. What? Well, Here we I'm go. I'm referring strictly to your perimeter that you set. Do you recall which street you set your perimeter? I want to say that I was probably the southernmost squad at that time, and I was at Southwest and Wood. I'm sorry, what was the second street? Wood. Thank you. 
Thank you, by the way, to everybody that told me about the uh, the body cam footage. Apparently, that was While an officer from another uh, perimeter. <laughs> did you receive any more information about the suspects who fled from the vehicle? It was all kind of at the same time. And do you recall being advised that the male black had possibly fled southbound and that the male white had may have fled in the westbound direction? Your Honor, I object. Move to strike. He's providing statements and facts that are not in evidence. They're based on hearsay. Um, so the same. question was, did he recall being advised that? That was the question. Does he recall being advised? Still hearsay. Sustained. So who were you advised by? Officer Moss. And do you recall what you were advised? Objection. Hearsay. Perhaps. Sustain. Next question. He can't stop. Grounds for sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Hearsay. He cannot stop with the hearsay. What's that hearsay? He was an now actual How did you attorney. end up he being understand. dispatched to the 500 block of Elizabeth Street? I heard another officer error that they were listening to Waukesha County Communications indicating that there was a person going door to door in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street. You know what's interesting? I was going to say, if he was an actual attorney, he would understand at this point what hearsay is. But actually, after eight days of being in trial and like me just looking at these videos, reading comments, which is probably more than I mean, he has actual documents and he has access to a library and all this stuff in the jail. I've learned what hearsay is, so he doesn't even need to be an actual attorney, which he's not, you know, be Fisher Price. But he could have learned exactly what hearsay is and you know i'm sure like in the first few days it was like an overload of information the objections that he was hearing you know he heard them enough times to where he remembers what they are but he doesn't know what they actually mean so yeah it's, it's just very lazy work on his end no work at all to be honest but I'm sorry, you said you stated you heard that? Yes. Wouldn't that be like hearsay? Only if it's being offered for the truth of the matter asserted. If it's just explain what he did next, then no. He has to ask that for was the help. Same question I asked before you ran During the trial. And upon arriving at Elizabeth Street, you stated that there was already a suspect being detained at the at the moment that you arrived no any follow-up to that so what did you observe when you got to the 500 block of elizabeth street i already explained that upon getting there i traveled westbound on elizabeth street till it ended at which point i turned around and came back so when i initially got there i didn't see anything did you observe did you observe someone being detained at gunpoint not a, not upon initially getting there no not not initially did did at any time you observe someone being detained at gunpoint yes already said that do you recall what they had on yes you stay for the record and for the jury what they had on they had a red t-shirts and blue jeans Blue jeans. They, were they uh -oh. jogging? Here we go. Jogging pants or blue jeans? Appeared to be blue jeans. Any reason why this wouldn't say that? And do you recall why the suspect was being detained at that at that time? Yes. And what do you recall about why they were being detained at that time? You were being detained for involvement in a crash in the downtown area. I got a feeling he's going to 
try to press about that. About a crash being different from actually running through a parade. Or he may just read for 10 minutes and move on to the next question. It's really a toss up. When the suspect was detained, do you recall? Do you recall stating that you were confident they were either the driver or passenger of the vehicle found at three three eight Maple? No, I never said that. Daryl never knows what to do with confidence statements. Like when you make a confidence statement, did you give a just, report uh, about what happened that evening? Yes. Did you write it yourself? Yes. Oh boy, he's marking out questions. Last time he did that, he was moving to the sovereign citizen. I'm reading from your report right here that you just stated that you wrote. Do you recall saying, I was confident that Brooks was either the driver or passenger of the striking vehicle? That is in my report. However, you asked if I said that. I didn't say that. That's a more or less an internal dialogue with myself saying that I felt confident that you were the suspect, either the driver or passenger in that vehicle. <laughs> He's basically saying, uh, I didn't say that. I wrote it. You asked me if I said it. I didn't say it. I wrote it. That's like something that Daryl would basically say, you know, in terms of the, he just tried it a second ago. They were saying, um, one officer said he was wearing jeans and I guess the report says jogging pants or something like that. It's like, dude, okay. Why is this a point that you're even arguing right now? Like this, is this going to get you out of this situation? No, but I love when they never give Daryl anything like, if you don't say it the right way, I'm just going to give you a hard time. I'm not going to help you out here. Because at times, you know, they could ask certain questions and you can tell what they're getting at. And you could like go ahead, I'm sure, and just answer it. But I love the fact that he's not even giving him that kind of break. It's like, no, you say it the way that, uh, you, you say it directly or I will not answer it. I bet Daryl is like heated right now. <laughs> and he doesn't know what to do about it either. But mark out more questions. So it'd be fair to say at the time. Prosecution's yawning. Of your report, you were confident that it was more than one person in the vehicle. No. That's actually interesting. I didn't know so that. So why did you write the report in that fashion? I was confident that you were involved with that vehicle and with the crash in the downtown area. So would it be fair to, would it be fair to say that you couldn't have wrote you could have written your report in that fashion instead of the fashion that you wrote it? Objection argumentative. Grounds. Sustained. As to the form of the question. Any reason why you were referred to a passenger? Yes. Initially, there was reports that multiple people fled from the vehicle, from the area of the vehicle. Okay, that clears up what I was just about to say. Because that's interesting. I feel like I do remember them mentioning something like that, like around the time he actually ditched the vehicle in that, uh, in the driveway. Because there were so many different reports coming out, right, of like him, um, of people saying they saw one person and multiple people. But, yeah, I was actually going to ask some questions about that. Like, when did, uh, when did those types of questions actually come up? Like, or those types of reports, I mean, people stating that there were multiple people. But that makes sense. 
sometimes people and just see different things. Because of those reports is why you wrote when there are a lot of your different witnesses. Report in that fashion, or in that fashion that you wrote. Objection has been answered. Argumentative grounds. Sustain this in the form of the question. I got a feeling he's gonna ask something really ridiculous. Like he hasn't done it quite yet. I mean, he's asked some really bad questions, but I got a feeling he's gonna ask something that's gonna. He's gonna get completely like outsmarted, and then he's gonna later on have a tantrum. I can just feel it kind of trending in that direction. He's about to ask something. So when you were, when you observed the suspect being detained at Elizabeth Street, at that time did you know the suspect's name? No. Like, all it's going to take is for him to ask, and you keep referring to the suspect as Gerald Brooks. Why is that? And that usually open the, opens the doors for, like, him just wanting to argue, pretty much. And you found a credit or debit card when uh, conducting a search? Yes. Do, recall, do you recall where you found that credit or debit card? Your right pocket. In Exhibit 176, where, where it shows um, someone holding the credit card, um, was that you? Was what me? Holding the credit card. No. But you are the one that found it. Yes. Ask him about the name that was on those cars, Daryl. That seems like a very important question. And what he, else? He's not going to ask that. A Ford car key, vehicle key. And where did you find that? Your right pant po pants pocket. What are these questions right now? You know, it would make sense if he asked these types of questions and then he immediately after those statements, like asked follow up questions that like, I, you know, we talk about this a lot. The follow up questions start to dismantle the actual statements that they're making right now during this testimony. But he never does that. He just he just throws the question out there. You know, it's not even dressed up. It's not even set up in a certain way. Because I'm sure when his uh, previous attorneys, when they wrote it, they didn't mean for it to just be blandly stated in the way that he's doing it. It was probably a way that they set it up and everything. He's just, here you go. Here's the question. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Strange stuff. Can you play uh, Exhibit 80 for the witness? You should ask the prosecution that. The entire Can video you? or just a part of it? Um, I'm guessing around the four minute and 50 or something, somewhere up in that area. That's the last 10 seconds, sir. Is that what you want? Yeah, somewhere up in that area. Take a look at it. Is that where you want it to start? Or farther back? Uh, a little farther back. Thank you, Miss Gussie. How about there? Uh, 436. A little further back, I'm sorry. Maybe, yeah, for wherever it's at right now, 409. Can you play it from there real quick? You want the sound, I take it? Uh, I, I don't really think the sound is necessary. More, more so the visual. 
Okay. Daryl with no confidence in his statements once again. Just like his objections. Zero percent confidence in him. Do you remember this video? No, I don't. I didn't. That's not my body cam video. Pause. Well, go back like two seconds. Thank you once again is, for doing that. Is that? He's gonna ask about screen, pants. Right? Is this right here? The credit debit cards that you found? I can't tell what that is. Can you clear that? Madam Clerk, please and thank you. Thank you. Can you go back maybe two more seconds? I think it's a clearer shot. For the record, Your Honor, it's not that easy to just jump back two seconds. I mean, if he has a specific time, we can jump I mean, to a time. How would I know if I, if I only seen the, visit, the video once? Like, Whose fault is that? that big of a deal? Whose fault is that? Can you play from right there? Right there. 435, Your Honor. 435. Now it's on 437. We started you it. Pause it at 435. Right. It was started, and then you said pause, and obviously it takes time to do that. So. What is happening right now? With the record to reflect that Mr. Brooks has drawn a circle around something on the still image. Go ahead, ask your question. The record should reflect on consent to their name. Ask your question, sir. Around the 435 mark, you can see um, who, whoever this is is holding. <coughs> Is holding the, the credit card, debit card. Is that you? Objection. That assumes the fact, not in evidence, Your Honor. Sustain. <coughs> Re rephrase your question. Can you clear that? Madam Clerk, please. Thank you. You said that you found a key. Where is the footage of you finding a key? I don't have a body cam, so there's not going to be video of my body cam. He did all of this to ask so that. So if you were wearing your body cam, it would have depicted what you found during your search? No, the city of Oxford did not have body cams during this incident. Thank you to everybody to clear that up to me as well in the so comments. So it's fair to say there is no footage of you finding a key? I, grounds. It's argumentative, and he's already said he was not wearing a body camera. Actually, he can't he know said, possibly. It's speculation. He can't know possibly. Actually, he said the city of Waukesha didn't have body cams. He didn't say. Right. It, it sustained. It assumes facts not in evidence and calls for speculation on the part of this witness, and there's also lack of foundation as to this witness. The foundation is this mysterious key he said he found. There are in the crosses will now. disregard that statement made by Mr. Brooks. It's not his time to testify. In the crosses now. You need to do that later if you choose. I don't consent to being called that name for the record. In the cross exam, man. <laughs> he needs to end this. It's starting to fall apart very quickly. And now I'm seeing people that are in the uh, in the stands right now. They're getting just as annoyed probably family members that you know they're coming here to see justice get dealt out and he's just making this I don't know it's it's just terrible when you really think about it. I mean we talked about this a bunch of times but it's messed up because I'm sure it's a lot of family members in attendance and they have to see him act this way so it sucks he even got the chance to do this but At any time that evening, were you able to detain any other suspects? No. After the suspect was detained, do you recall how long you stayed at the scene? <clears throat> Which particular part of the scene? 
where you had detained the suspect. At 553 Elizabeth Street? Correct. Off my best estimate, I was probably there for about 25 minutes. And what did you do in those 25 minutes? During those 25 minutes was time detaining you as well as briefly speaking with the homeowner and ultimately turning you back over to detectives. And what did you do from there? From there, I went back into a perimeter position. Would that would that be referring to the uh, perimeter that you were, that you mentioned that you had set? Yes. Uh, around the area of where Officer Moss was located. Yes. There you go, Daryl. He's paying attention a little bit. Wow. There you go. Now, he must have been the officer on the ring footage that briefly asked the homeowner, like, hey, do you know this and how guy? how long did and you stay at that uh, perimeter? I'm not 100% positive. Extended period of time. Do you recall why you were dispatched back to that perimeter? At that time, there was a possibility that there may be another party involved. So as the investigation was still ongoing and they're attempting to determine if there was another party involved, the perimeter was maintained so that no one could squeeze out through that perimeter and flee. And do you recall there being ring footage uh, of the of the residence of 553 Elizabeth Street? Yes. Did you view those, uh, did you view the ring footage that evening? No. Did you view the ring footage at all? Yes. Are you aware of what happened to the ring footage? A copy of the ring footage was emailed to me by the homeowner. And it was ultimately placed on property inventory at the Waukesha Police Department. Do you recall if it was multiple videos? It was, yes. Trying to think of what he's gonna ask about this. He's getting at something. It's probably gonna be about the um, the payment thing, and he's gonna ask him like, "So were you a part of that? Like, were you getting some of the money?" Because it all kind of that's pretty much all his questions really lead up to at some point. Because once again, everyone needs to be paid to put him behind bars. He, it's just not. It's not possible otherwise. Do you recall that about 1640 hours? I don't know, would, would that be 440? Yes, that's 440. Do you recall directing traffic at the intersection of Barstow Street and Corina? Yes. And did you recall an officer hearing anything over the radio at that time? Yes, I do. Do you recall what that was? An officer had aired that you had driven around his barricade or into the parade route. <clears throat> you? Who do you, who do you refer to as you? You, Daryl Brooks. And you knew that at that time? Not at that time, no. So how can you say it was you me? Say you? Throughout the investigation, was determined to be you. <coughs> it's the first time so far he's actually. Uh, and do you recall about there, the you uh, thing? Do you recall it being any other air information at that time? Yes. Do you recall what that was? 
objection calls are here saying grounds are you offering it for the truth of the matter asserted or for some other reason otherwise for, it's hearsay. for the truth of the matter i'm asking him does he recall what was aired on his radio well then you're asking him to testify to hearsay so it's sustained I don't know how many times. <laughs> I'm guessing he's just going to do this until the end of the trial at this point because he doesn't get really what hearsay is. Do you recall an officer indicating that a vehicle was continuing westbound and possibly blaring his horn? Objection. Grounds. Same objection, Same Your Honor. He's attempting to testify and offering hearsay statements into the record. I'm not attempting to testify. Um, sustained. <coughs> Grounds for the sustain? For the reasons the state indicated. Do you recall? You can ask the witness if he heard any horns at that time. That would be different. <coughs> you have to actually coach this man through his... But what someone it's else may have reported out. would be hearsay if it's offered for the truth of the matter asserted. Well, I'm, I'm reading from the report that he wrote. She literally that just told you how to ask the question. He still won't, he won't do it. If it's in the report, she just someone told someone him how to do it. Double hearsay. Do you recall hearing about a vehicle blowing his horn? Objection. Well, Same objection, Your Honor. Um, overruled, he asked if this witness heard. That's how I heard the question. I think that's what you were asking. You yeah. mean at the... Did you hear about a horn? <coughs> what did oh. you hear, Your Honor? If the question was, did he, this witness hear a horn, then that witness may answer the question. <coughs> did he hear about a horn? That's different, that would be hearsay. So why don't you rephrase your question, sir? Did you hear a horn? No. And, and just so we're clear, I assume when you when he that your question meant when he was at Barstow and Karina. Because that's where he was positioned. Correct. Right? That's what you meant? Yeah. Is that was that your understanding? Yes. Okay. Very well. Next question. Do you have any other question, questions for yeah. this witness? Yeah. Sometime today or within the, the next hour? Why it would be in your report that the vehicle was blaring his horn? Same objection, Your Honor. Grounds. S assumes facts not in evidence. Calls for hearsay. Sustained. Have you read the complaint in this matter? No. Have you seen the complaint in this matter? No. Sovereign citizen BS begins now. You yourself file a claim in this matter? No. You know of anyone who filed a claim in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Oh. Overruled. He may answer if he knows. No. <coughs> Do you recall whom subpoenaed you to testify here today? The state of Wisconsin via the Washington County District Attorney's Office. And you say state of Wisconsin, who, who would you be referring to when you say state of Wisconsin? The entity that is the state of Wisconsin judicial system. So the state of Wisconsin is an entity to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Is an entity a living, breathing human? Objection. Irrelevant, argumentative, sustained. Next question. 
These questions don't get any Do less weird. Do you want weird to state that Wisconsin is the plaintiff in this matter? Yes. An entity is the plaintiff? Objection. Argumentative. Ground. Sustained. He's still writing something down, strange enough. I mean, honestly, he should have all these questions like have on you ever had any notes. interaction with the plaintiff thing. in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Um, <coughs> sustained. It's also overly broad. You ever had a phone conversation? Objection. Irrelevant. Oh. With the plaintiff? <laughs> <coughs> He wants her About to this cross case? exam at this point. About this case. Overruled, you may answer. No. He's just <clears> hoping <throat> that she ends it. Have you ever seen the plaintiff in this case? Objection, Your Grounds. Honor. This entire line of questioning is completely irrelevant. Grounds. Um, sustain on relevance. Grounds. Next question, please. Somebody actually made an interesting point about this. They said that um, when he deals with a witness sometimes that he's threatened by, he doesn't want to say or he doesn't want to voluntarily back, like back down from his question. And that's actually an interesting idea. Like he, that may be the way that he views it if he says that he has no further questions it's almost like a him backing down question. or something right, thank you any redirect I, he did it there oh, nothing else thank you judge i thought it was a really All interesting right, thank point, you though. this will be a good opportunity to take a mid-afternoon break as well i'll rise for the jury please Before we bring the jury back out, if we could just maybe talk scheduling for a moment. We are back on the record, and the audio's on, so that's good. Um, right. turning and I won't skip this, by the way. Some people said not to skip today. it. you today? I presume you have probably another witness or so. Yes, we were just uh, discussing that as well, Your Honor. I have one more witness whom I believe will be shorter in duration, and then we would be prepared to start with another witness who is lengthier uh, probably about an hour for direct examination i'm sorry probably about four hours because of the recorded interviews that need to be displayed to the jury so oh, we wow. could either start that witness this afternoon and get some of it done and uh finish with him in the morning or four hours i wonder who that's gonna with him in the morning be. and then do we have the interpreter coming tomorrow yes and we have we have that interruption or pause in our case scheduled um, I'm told the interpreter would be ready or excuse me available anytime between 9 30 and noon so um, maybe around the time of the mid-morning break we would pause what we're doing in the state's case and turn to the defense witness all right and then, Your Honor, uh, <coughs> truthfully, at this point, we are probably on track to rest sometime on Wednesday. Uh, we've, we've done good today. We're on schedule for today. But uh, especially if we have to interrupt with that defense witness tomorrow, um, <coughs> we don't think we'll be able to finish until sometime on Wednesday. OK, understood. Um, and have you been in contact with the witnesses that were subpoenaed by Mr. Brooks to let them know about when they will be needed? Yes, and we will need further direction on that from Mr. Brooks as far as what order he would like them in and when he wants them here. And again, he uh, depending on how this shapes out, I think probably right about this time tomorrow we'll be in better shape to know if we would perhaps get to defense witnesses Wednesday afternoon or just start Thursday morning with defense witnesses. Is he, if he lets us know the order he wants them in, uh, we can start making those arrangements on his behalf. But um, to not, right now, they all know that they're essentially on call for you know more towards the end of the week. All right. Um, and if I my memory serves, 
the witness who would be called out of order. Is that Juan Marquez? Yes. All right. So you should probably be ready to have that person because that's when we have the interpreter available. Uh, tomorrow sometime, I presume you still want to call that witness? All right, and so just be prepared to do your direct when we can fit it in at the appropriate break and depending on where we end with witnesses tonight. And then if you would let the state know the order of your witnesses um, so we can have them come at different times so that they're not all here for days waiting to be called. With all respect, uh, <clears throat> the prosecution didn't tell me the, the order of their witnesses. Why do I have to tell them the order of mine? because they're assisting you in getting them to court. They've served the subpoenas on your behalf. And as a courtesy to those witnesses, I need you to provide, um, I don't even care if it's the order, but if you say these three will be called in the morning, these three will be in the afternoon, that would be okay with me. I just wanna be able to tell those witnesses through the DA, you three will be Wednesday afternoon, you three will be whatever the number is. He literally does know work whatsoever but even that much he's upset that he even has to do a single thing right now and he's essentially not even essentially right now he's basically fighting if you like once again if you want to call that or if you want to call this fighting he's fighting for his freedom but he's pushing back on the fact that he has to do things like this is just will be right. Thursday morning okay. and the rest Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, whatever it may be. I He's going to steer this in the subject still, matter jurisdiction. He from, doesn't even from what I'm hearing from the prosecution. They're not sure exactly when they'll be resting their case. So I think they're trying to rest their case sooner rather than later, you. but they have some witnesses to get through. And what they're telling us is that that will be sometime on Wednesday, given the pause that they will take in their case to call Mr. Marquez so that he can be questioned by you uh, with the interpreter. So wouldn't it make more sense to to start calling my witnesses Thursday then? If no, you should be ready to go Wednesday afternoon. I'm not going to take a break. He's trying you to should delay be ready it. to go. I mean, if we get done at 4 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon, that might be a different story, but it sounds like we should be able to uh, call witnesses. Of course, you uh, will need to let me know if you're going to give an opening statement. Um, you had deferred that and that <coughs> could adjust some of the timing. But So I need you uh, to provide that order to the state uh, tomorrow when you come into court so that they I'm, can work with those witnesses. I'll probably better. say I'm not going to provide a specific order. I'm not going to do that. Well, then I, you need to tell I'm, which day. Like morning and afternoon, and how this many witnesses on with per. I'm not going to just really bring them matter. in um, all at the same time and make them wait. That's not, um, that would be a discourtesy to those witnesses who you are calling. So I, wanna, I want to have some idea of what your game plan is for them. I get that. There but is I'm no still, game I'm plan. still confused. Um, I, I, just, I essentially didn't know who they was calling in order. Um, that's not really relevant at this moment, sir. So I need you to provide the order. I'm not going to provide and, the order. Or by what, start Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon. Um. Okay, then let's move on. I mean, honestly, I would not care 1%. You know, if he just says like, oh, I'm not going to give you the, okay, well, we'll just forget about Juan Marquez as well. We'll just move on. You know, whatever. Whatever witnesses that he's trying to call in, if you're not going to assist and these are your witnesses that you want, I mean, if you don't care, then we're just going to move on with what the prosecution wants to do. It, it'll just be what they're planning in terms of the witnesses because it's weird he thinks that it's, it, it's really going to work that way. He doesn't do anything, so therefore everyone has to stop. It's like... It's weird. I mean, inaction is also an action. I, I heard that from somewhere. I thought it was gonna, <laughs> I thought it was going to sound way cooler once I said it out loud. Friday there, morning, you know? Friday afternoon, unless they're very no short. Just keep in mind, that. we generally have about, when we start at 8.30, we go till about noon. I'll probably start up an hour, hour and 15 minutes. 
uh, after the lunch so you have another couple of hours so you should be able to know about how long you're gonna question them and just um, give us who those are for each of those blocks uh, and then be ready for Mr. Marquez tomorrow. I'll be ready for that but All I'll, right. probably, I'll probably have an idea of who I want who I think should come in but I'm, I'm not gonna provide an order. Well, if he wants our assistance, Your Honor, we will do that. Otherwise, he can be responsible for getting these witnesses here himself. Exactly. You've got Thank to cooperate you. with this processor. They're Thank assisting you. you. Otherwise, you're going to be responsible for telling these witnesses when to come in. And so how am, how am I supposed to do that? Well, then you should okay. cooperate well, with the state and know. their assistance to help you, sir. I'm, I'm not going to give a specific order. That's fine. Sir, are you willing to provide the, the who the witnesses are by half day? I just said that. All right, I and that's what gonna, I need by tomorrow morning. I said morning. I'm not giving an order is that's what fine. I said. That's fine. I'm okay with that, and the state will be okay with that because I said they'll be okay with that. So, We're okay, Judge. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So what about the, what's supposed to be going on today? How, how late do we plan to go today? Well, we'll have to see how long this witness lasts and if we can start the next witness. I, 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 4.35 o'clock, maybe even 5.30, we'll see. So, with that, let's I'm bring I'm curious about out. the four hour. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction at some point? I'm going to go with this. Not beyond what I've already addressed, sir. Which you addressed it, you didn't prove it, you didn't verify it. I'm not going to skip it either. It's not verified proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction yet. It's not being proven on the record. <clears throat> Can we please just ignore him? Yes. I'm so happy that he's just, she's just ignoring him now. Because at this point, that's that's like a last ditch effort. That he sees that things are kind of moving on without him. That. Your request is noted for the record. I've already addressed it. Is it noted for the record? should be noted for the record also that's the type of degree all rise for the jury please thank you we already been riding wondering when we gonna get the answer to that subject matter jurisdiction though i'm glad the jury's hearing this once again See how like everyone else in the room is composed and he's the only one that's like blurting out like random stuff. Like, he never thinks Thank about you, like, the Please optics be of that seated. Then, he, then again, he doesn't care. Attorney Opera, you may call your I'm next witness. Way too deep into it. Thank you. The state calls Officer Leha. Good afternoon, Officer Leha. If you would please make your way to my witness stand. Right. When you get there, please remain standing, raise your right hand. My Clerk Teresa will swear, swear you in. Officer. I solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. I have no idea why. I should say the phone. witness stand. I don't have ownership over it. But in any event, state your first and last names for the record. First name Draylon, last name Leha. Could you spell both? D R A E L O N, last name Leha, L E I J A. All right, thank you. Go ahead, your witness. All right, thank you, Officer Leha. Sir, I'd like to direct your attention to the evening of November 21, 2021. Were you working on duty that afternoon? Yes. All right, I should ask, where do you work? Uh, City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you been a police officer? A little over two years. Okay. So on that evening, uh, were you aware that the parade was taking place in downtown Waukesha? Yes, ma'am. Did you work the parade? No, ma'am. Do you recall what time it was when you came on duty, sir? Objection well, relevancy. Over you may answer. I believe it was a little after five. Were you scheduled to work that evening? Yes. Okay. And uh, around the time of 12 a.m. midnight, so now I think we're getting into the next day of November 22 of 2021, uh, were you asked to assist detectives at Waukesha Memorial Hospital? Yes, ma'am. Did you go to that location? I did. And did you meet with anybody there? 
Yes, ma'am. Objection ma leading. Um, overruled. You may answer. Yes, ma'am. Who did so. you meet with? I met with Detective Jay Carpenter and acting detective at the time, uh, D Detective Stern. Did they uh, ask you to assist them in some fashion? Yes, ma'am. What did they ask you to do? I was tasked. Um, overruled, you may answer. I was tasked with um, transporting Mr. Brooks to the Muskego Police Department. Okay. So at this point, Mr. Brooks is in custody. Yes, ma'am. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, overruled, you may answer, sir. Yes, ma'am. And the person you were uh, asked to drive to the Muskego Police Department, do you see him in this courtroom here today? Yes, ma'am. Would you identify him, please? And uh, if Mr. Brooks would please remove his mask, Your Honor? Objection, I, I don't consent sir, to being called that name. Oh, thank you, Neymar. But I Apologies. Um, go ahead. It's the no black mask at the table with the black suit and the mask that he just put back on. Where did you first meet? Oh, hold on. The record should reflect he did point to the defense table, and the record will reflect he identified him. Go ahead. Okay. Where did you first meet Mr. Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Call him there. I walked on the hospital appreciate. in the police hold room. I'm sorry, can you um, repeat that? Mr. Brooks was talking over you. Objection, I don't consent to be called that name. Overruled. Go ahead, sir. Call him At the Walker Shaw Memorial Hospital in the police hold room. All right, and where were you going to take him? To the Muskego Police Department. Why? Objection, leading. Overruled. Uh, Detective Carpenter said that he was going to be there um, so that he can question them sometime in the near future. Is the Muskego Police Department located in the city of Waukesha? No, ma'am. Relevancy. Overruled. He may answer. No, ma'am. Why did you take him back to your police department? Objection. Overruled. He may answer. At the time, we were at the annex, which is our older police department. Our um, police department that we usually report out, report out of was being renovated, so we didn't have any holdings. Okay. And... Uh, to your knowledge, does the Muskego Police Department have a holding cell at their facility? Objections. Overruled. You may you may answer. Yes, ma'am. And they were willing to uh, house Mr. Brooks there under mutual aid? Objection. I don't consent to being called that day. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Yes, ma'am. So, you put him in your squad car? Yes, ma'am. All right. Tell us about that. Your drive. <coughs> Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. So I put Mr. Brooks in my squad car. Um, we left the hospital around, I took custody of him around 12, 18 a.m. Um, we typed in my GPS to the Muskego Police Department. Um, we left the hospital. We had to go eastbound in Wisconsin, which is a road that's parallel to Main Street where the parade was taking place. Okay. Um, once we passed the uh, while going eastbound in Wisconsin, there was multiple uh, marked squad cars so they're with their emergency lights on. Do you know what they were doing? Uh, Where did they see? Overruled. You may answer, sir. They were blocking traffic, uh, investigating um, an incident that transpired earlier that, that evening. Okay. Is it just, <coughs> excuse me, is it just you and Mr. Brooks in the squad car? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. You may see? answer. Yes, it was just me and Daryl Brooks in the, the squad car. Okay. Objection, I don't consent to be called that name. Overruled. And as you traveled uh, in the area of Wisconsin Avenue, did Mr. Brooks make any statements? Objection, I don't consent to be called that name. Um, overruled, you may answer, sir. <laughs> yes, can we remove? Mr. Brooks said, uh, once we were going to respond to Wisconsin, um, and I quote, he said, uh, damn, it looks like they were dealing with something heavy. Okay. Did you reply to him in any way? No. Did he continue to speak? Yes, ma'am. What else did he say? He asked me if there was a basketball game going on or something tonight, and to which I replied, I'm not sure. Okay. Did you continue on uh, transporting him to the Muskego Police Department? Yes, ma'am. And uh, at some point, were you responsible for watching over him at the Muskego Police Department? Yes, ma'am. Relevancy. Overruled. Your answer may stand. Go ahead and um, just wait until I rule on the objections, okay, I'm sorry. please. That's okay. How long did you watch him for? Objection, rather busy. Overruled. I believe we got to the jail around closer to 1 a.m. Um, 
I watched him up until about 7 a.m. I really think at this point the objection thing is like a mind game just to train the witness to pay attention to him. It's almost like they have to, because he seems like obsessed with control. So it's like the fact that they can't answer the question, they have to like actually pause for a beat and like wait to see if he throws out an objection because then they have to therefore wait for you know judge darrow i'm gonna i'm gonna say her last name now because people were upset in the comments about that but judge darrow they they have to ask for her to make a ruling on that and therefore he feels like he's in control of their testimony i feel like that's probably like a little game a little psychological game that he tries to play what kind of things really do you remember like, he did overnight? I'm Jackson, noticing it at this Jackson. point. Overruled, he may answer. I know that he was fed around 2 a.m. Um, he slept most of the night. Uh, he got up around 5 a.m., asked for water. I got him water. Um, and he asked to make a phone call to his daughter. Okay. Did you allow that? No. Did... Uh, you said it appeared he was sleeping throughout most of the night? That's what actually hearsay. Um, overall. Did you any... answer? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Go ahead. All right. Uh, other than asking to call his daughter, did he make any other statements to you that you can recall? Objection, relevancy. Overruled, you may answer. I remember he made some complaints that the room was too bright and he wanted me to dim the room. Um, yeah, that's all that I remember he Okay. Saying. Like the lights in the room were too bright? Correct, in the cell, holding cell. Did you turn off the lights for him? No objection, Lee. Overruled, his answer may stand. And uh, were you relieved by another officer then later that morning? Objection, relevancy. Overruled, you may answer. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. Hey, Cross. Here we go. Yep. That's a yes? Yeah. Sure. yeah. Go ahead. Pure clown. Get the clown show going already. You said that you recall uh, checking every 30 minutes on uh, doing like uh, well-being checks, right? That's correct. And how do you know for sure that the suspect was asleep? I don't know for sure if you were sleeping, I know that the cover was over your head, um, and I would, every time I go and check in on you, um, I can see that your chest was rising up and down from underneath the blanket, so it's a possibility that you were sleeping, it's a possibility that you weren't. I know that you were on cover, so it appeared that you were asleep most of the night. So it'd be fair to say you're not sure? It, it's answer, stands your honor, it's asked an answer. Objection. Um, overruled, he may answer. Could have been sleepy, probably, Probably sleepy, probably wasn't, but the blank was over your head most of the night. Very important detail. If he was sleeping or not, that's that's gonna make or break this whole thing. And do you recall why the suspect was not allowed a phone call? I was told that uh, you had to wait for a detective, Jay Carpenter, to talk to you. Uh, do you know if that's standard practice? Not sure if it's standard practice or not, but just following his instruction, as if because he was going to be doing some investigation. Would you would you say it's fair to say that usually the suspect being detained is allowed a phone call at some point? Relevance. Grounds. Relevance, sir? Grounds. No. <clears throat> why do you believe it's relevant? Um, why would why would the uh, contact to the outside world be restricted? All right, it's uh I'll rule that it's not relevant, sustain the objection. Next question. So now I see what's going on here. So now I got a feeling he is upset because he denied him a phone call and he wouldn't turn the lights down. So now he feels like this is his his moment 
to get him back for not uh, allowing him to make a phone call and, you know, for dimming the light so he could sleep better. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that's why he's like being ever so slightly with this uh, cross exam. He said being ever so slightly aggressive, I mean. Do you recall what time you got to, I think it was you said, the hospital to pick up the suspect? Yes, I left at 12, 12 10. I got to the hospital around 12 18. To the best of your recollection, do you recall being given uh, any information at that time about uh, the suspect being questioned? I don't recall if I was given any information on you being questioned at that time. I'm waiting for the who is you question. He kind of starts to say that towards like the middle, close to the end now. It's weird. He's even saving up his energy for like those little arguments. And you refer to a police hold room inside of the hospital? That's correct. So it's not it's not unusual for someone to be detained in the police hall room inside of the hospital. That's correct. There's an active investigation going on. So would that be the only time if during an active investigation? Usually that we someone from the outside coming to the police hall room yes for an active investigation. Do you recall where in the hospital this police hold room is located? In the hospital. Do you recall where in the hospital is located? It's usually by the where the police officers park their vehicles through the ambulance bay uh, straight ahead and it's the second to last door on the right. Pointless question. To the best of your knowledge, do you know if those police hold rooms have cameras? I'm not sure. Before that particular incident, had you ever been in the police hold room in that hospital? Yep. Yes, sorry. And you stated that detectives informed you that they would need to speak with the detainee before any phone calls would be made. That's correct. To the best of your recollection, did they explain why to you? Relevance. Grounds. Calls for speculation. Grounds. I'm sorry, calls for hearsay. Grounds. And speculation. Are you offering it for the truth of the matter, yep. sir? Then it's hearsay and it's. <clears throat> he said it thinking that she was going to say, well, you can ask the question. <laughs> The detainee was turned over to an officer Paulson after, um, I'm, I'm guessing at the end of your shift. That's correct. Do you recall if the cell the detainee was uh, sleeping in that night had cameras? I'm not sure. Do you recall who 
did the booking process at the Muskego Police Department? Yes, I believe it was Lieutenant Andrika and um, Officer Klink of the Muskego Police Department. To the best to the best of your recollection, do you recall why one of those officers weren't uh, doing the well-being checks? Because you were in our custody. Once again, it's no, literally no setup to these questions or anything. Just kind of tossing them out there. Do you recall when you did your report? The date of it? I don't recall the exact day I did my report. Was it that same evening or was it sometime after? When you say the same evening, what what date are you the talking same, about? The same, even, the same evening or morning that you ended up having to do the well-being checks at the Muskego Police Department. I don't recall <coughs> if I did it that day, but it most definitely was done shortly after. Shortly after, meaning a few days or a week or so? A few days. You don't recall if it was the 29th of November of 2021? I don't recall. When you were dispatched to the Waukesha Memorial Hospital, did you observe any FBI agents at the scene? At the scene of the hospital? Yes. No. So to the best of your recollection, it was only the two detectives that you made contact with? Yes. Can you explain what the mobile audio video recording system is? It is um, it's an in squad camera that records um, outside of the squad car, so like in front of the squad car in the prisoner compartment. And it's a microphone that we um, put to our, our vest or our, on our person uh, to record audio statements. Man, it sucks so I don't have my phone right now. It's, it's video and audio. Correct. That definitely needs to go in my notes. I don't even have something to write with either. Did it record the detainee during your transport? Yes, it did. Besides the statements that you made reference to, did you observe or hear anything other than those statements? What do you mean? Can you clarify that for me? Did you observe anything strange or while the recording was taking place? I don't know what you mean by strange. Like, did you notice any strange movements by the detainee? Anything that would alarm you in any way? Nothing that would alarm me, no. <coughs> What's the point of that question? It's weird. He tries to ask like questions like that. I don't know if he's trying to say, like, oh, I wasn't dangerous during the time, so I couldn't have done... Uh, what everyone's accusing me of. It's like, what, what is that even supposed to mean? Did you know the extent of the invest investigation at the time you were dispatched to Waukesha Memorial? No, my only task was to transport you to the Muskego Police Department. <clears throat> no further questions. Any redirect? Nothing else. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you. you missed the call. All right. Go ahead and call your next witness, then, please. State call Detective Jay Carpenter.
All right, I'm gonna grab my phone really quick. <laughs> All right, I'll go back and get that uh, during editing. Next witness is coming up. Hope everybody's doing good. I haven't said that yet. Hope everybody's staying safe out there it still amazes me how many viewers are like all across the world pretty much good afternoon detective carpenter if you would yeah, please wherever make you your are, way to the doing, witness stand which is good. to my right it is up one riser when you get there please remain standing raise your right hand and my clerk teresa will swear you in I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. <clears throat> the first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Sure. My name is Detective Jay Carpenter. First name spelled J A Y, last name spelled C A R P E N T E R. Go ahead. Sir, how are you employed? I am employed as a detective with the City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you been in law enforcement? 18 years. Have all those years been with the City of Waukesha Police Department? Yes. How long have you been detective? Almost five years. Direct your attention November 21st of last year. Were you working on that day? Yes, I was. Were you working the parade? <clears throat> I had actually been part of the parade. I marched in the parade as part of our Iron Guard unit and had completed my duty before the incident commenced. Okay. So this is the City of Waukesha annual holiday parade? Correct. Okay. And you say that you, after you finished the parade route, what, where did you go? So I went back to the City of Waukesha Police Department after I completed my part of the parade. And did you receive information while you're at the City of Waukesha Police Department regarding something that had happened at the parade? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer, sir. I did. Um, I changed out of my honor guard uniform and I was confronted by officer Daniel Malo. He was working as a desk officer for the department that day. Um, officer Malo explained that a vehicle had driven through the parade route down in downtown Waukesha, um, that there were approximately 30 to 40 people down, uh, many severely injured, some possibly deceased, um, and that there was also an officer involved, shooting involved in the whole event. What did you do as a result of receiving that information? Uh, at that point, I went on duty and began heading towards the um, downtown area. Where did you go specifically? So when I when I headed out, um, there was a lot of there was a lot of radio traffic. It was uh, very chaotic, very confusing. Um, it was certainly like nothing I've ever experienced before, as far as um, the radio traffic. Um, the event kind of began to mold into two different forms at that point in that uh, there were numerous officers calling for ambulances in the downtown area for the injured, but dispatch was also beginning to provide information that there was an inner individual in the area of the 500 block of Elizabeth Street, which is about a well, quarter of a mile off the parade route. <laughs> Um, that was loitering, and it was believed that may be the suspect, so I headed in that direction. Now, prior to heading in that direction, did you have any information as to why this person in that area would be a suspect? Direction leading. Um, overruled. He may answer. Uh, yes, ma'am. A description had been provided of a possible suspect, and the descriptions being provided by the dispatch of the, the individual now in this area were... Um, comparable, nearly identical to the descriptions I was hearing of the driver from the parade incident. What did you do then? As I was um, searching the area, I um, heard over the police radio that officers from a separate jurisdiction had come in contact with the suspect and that he was in custody. Um, I proceeded over to Elizabeth Street where 
The suspect who was identified in the investigation as Daryl Brooks was already in custody. Okay. Now, you stated that the information that you initially received with regard to the person involved's physical description, um, do you recall what that was? Objection leading. <clears throat> Overall, the answer. Uh, information that I heard over police radio was uh, an African American male, blue jeans, and a red T-shirt. So, what did you do after receiving this information about um, a potential person in custody? Um, I responded to the immediate area. Um, Mr. Brooks, at that point, was already in custody. Um, I don't recall if he was outside a squad being searched, but he was handcuffed. Um, had already effectively in custody at that point. He was uh, placed in the rear of a city walkshop police car um, where he was um, taken into custody for loitering as well as being a suspect at that point um, as the operator of the vehicle that went through the parade route. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Overruled. Your answer stands. Go ahead, next question. At the time that you make... So this is interesting. So he kind of has like a a double-sided like viewpoint. So, or not double-sided viewpoint. I don't know why I worded it in that way. But he marched in the parade and also had contact with Daryl like during the time they were arresting him, I think is, is basically what he's about to say right now. But that's, I'm trying to remember, do we have anybody else that was kind of in that same situation? It, there there have been so many officers at this point. I feel like there was one. Actually, no. The only one that's kind of similar to that situation was the um, the officer whose daughter par participated in the parade. And then he um, was walking uh, at the time. He was walking with his dog and his daughter at the time where Daryl ditched the vehicle. I think that's pretty much the closest that we've come to a situation like this. But... Yeah, that's that's Her pretty. Contact with this individual. Did you have any information about to like the, hear how the he saw it and that had been used his experience during the parade? Objection leading. Overruled. <coughs> yes, a red SUV. Uh, that was actually a, a red Ford Escape, specifically. And did you have any information that had been located at Darryl. the time that you went to the Elizabeth Street address? Yes, it had already been located. Did you have any information about that red SUV prior to going to Elizabeth Street? Objection. Leading. The information I recall having is that the vehicle was uh, parked over on Maple Avenue, which is about two and a half to three blocks west of Elizabeth Street, where Mr. Brooks was located and taken into custody. Okay. Objection. I don't consent to being caught that night. Overruled. Did you have the opportunity to speak with an individual who was identified as Daryl Brooks Objection. at that Elizabeth Street address? Go ahead, you may I don't believe I spoke with him at that address, but Mr. Brooks was transported to our substation located on Les Paul Parkway in the city of Waukesha where I had opportunity to speak with him. Did you see him at the Elizabeth Street address? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you see him in the court today? I do. Uh, I'd ask the court to ask Mr. Brooks to remove his mask. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Can you identify him by where he's seated and what he's wearing? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Brooks is seated to my left, uh, wearing a dark colored suit jacket, multicolored tie, surgical mask on his face, shaved head, um, and he did have a beard at the time he took his mask off. Let the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant. It will reflect. Thank you. So as you see Mr. Brooks today, does he look different than he did on November 21st of last year? Objection. Well, let me see. Well, we answer. Yes, ma'am. How? Objection. Leading. Overruled. At the this time of the, um, at the, time <laughs> of the incident, tell. Mr. Brooks had longer hair, uh, a braided style hair that probably went midway down his back. How about facial-wise? Uh, he had a beard at that time, but it's a little bit shorter now. It was a little bit thicker and longer at the time. So you stated that um, the defendant was transported to a substation? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay. And do you recall who transported him? 
Uh, specialist Mark Howard. Did you follow the Specialist Howard to the substation? Yes, I did. Upon either, should I say, at the scene, did you obtain items that were located on the defendant's person? Yes, I did. What did they consist of? So the items I received that were on Mr. Brooks' person at the time of his arrest, there were several items. One of them was a Wisconsin photo identification card. So it had a picture on the ID card that I recognized as being Mr. Brooks based on the fact I was with him at this time. Um, the name on that identification <coughs> card was Daryl Edward Brooks Jr., his date of birth being February 21st, 1982. There was also a Wisconsin green Wisconsin Quest card with Mr. Brooks' name on it, a silver American Express debit or credit card with Mr. Brooks' name on it, two Visa debit cards, one black, one white, both which had Mr. Brooks' name on it, and then there was a Georgia EBT card which had uh, the name of Mr. Brooks' girlfriend on it. Other than any the identifying information that you just testified to, is anything else turned over to you um, that was removed from Daryl Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name and he's leading. Overruled. Let me answer. Yes, ma'am. There was $4 cash, but also a Ford ignition key. Now, you say that there was a suspect vehicle that had been located? Yes, ma'am. Did you have any information prior to your discussions with the defendant about who the owner of that vehicle was? Objection, B. Overruled. You may answer. Yes, I did. And who was the owner of that vehicle? A female by the name of Dawn Woods. And do you recall what her address was? Objection. <clears throat> Overruled. The witness may answer. 4014 North 19th Street in the city of Milwaukee. I can tell just based on this. <laughs> I can tell based on this testimony right now, this cross exam is going to be insane. So it's going to be yet another situation where Daryl is basically arguing <laughs> with the witness because they're outsmarting him at every turn because this man is already agitated. Like he's already agitated to just hear Daryl's voice to see like the way he's conducting himself in here. It, this is gonna be it's gonna be wild you said? when the cross exam comes up here soon. The answer may stand. I'm gonna show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 172. Um, that's gonna appear on the screen in front of you. Uh, before we do that. Uh, these identifiers that you located for Daryl Brooks, did you uh, so take a picture? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I don't consent to being called that name for the hundredth time. <clears throat> Make it the two hundredth time. And let me know when you see something in your I see it. Okay. Um, do you recognize these items as those items you just described as having been removed from the defendant's person? Yes, I do. Okay. I'd ask the court to um, admit um, this exhibit into evidence and to publish it for the jury. Objection, Willie Missy. 172. Objection is overruled. Exhibit 172 is received. Permission to publish is granted. <clears throat> um, if you can, this is if you unbelievable. Can zoom in on the Wisconsin. His name Wisconsin is card. literally on most of these yeah. things. Um, the address on that Wisconsin identification card, is that the same address that you recited for Don Woods? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, ma'am, it is. This has to be the silliest thing on earth that he actually kept these items. And what was the date that that card was in his pocket? Objection and relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. June 14th, 2021. And the picture on the identification card, would that be consistent or inconsistent with what the defendant looked like on November 21st of last year? Objection leading. Overruled. Wait a second. Hold on. It's almost exactly what he looks like. Okay. People in the comments told me to pay attention to this part. I almost just like glanced over it. His height which a couple people have like referred to him as being 5'9". I think like a couple people say he was 5'9", 
and he was like 160 pounds. The height on <laughs> the height on his license here says 5'8", and he's about 140 pounds. So that small gap, what Daryl would consider an error in identifying him, was enough for him to argue like that aggressively. Like he made it seem as if there was like a four to five inch uh, discrepancy when it came to them describing his height. When literally right here, it, it's an inch off. And then the weight, I mean, you could, at the time he did this, he could have been 140 pounds. I mean, when you get your license, they don't weigh you. So like you could literally just tell them whatever. So even at this point when he was getting his license, he could have been 160 or, you know, well over that. But it's like, that's that's just ridiculous. That is the... He's a real-life cartoon character. Now, as you were at the substation, Jill, what did like, you do honestly. that can be removed? I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, for the most part, what we were doing down there is obtaining basic booking information. So I, I, can, I confirmed Mr. Brooks' first name, middle name, um, last name, date of birth. I obtained an emergency contact for him phone numbers, um, whether he was working or not, going to school, um, obtained information about his tattoos, piercings, things of that nature. Personal personal identification information. Okay. And who did he say he his emergency contact his was? Objection, irrelevancy. Overruled. He may answer. Mr. Brooks indicated his emergency contact person was Don Woods. And what relationship was Don Woods to him? Objection, irrelevancy. Overruled. He may answer. It is Mr. Brooks' mother. And did you subsequently obtain a phone number for Don Woods? I did. Objection, relevancy. Overruled, the witness may answer. What is that phone number, if you recall? Objection, relevancy. 414-610-2153. Now, when you ask... I should have wrote down the last number. I don't name, even know if that's the same one. It has to be. Was. Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Oh, please. <laughs> please. I believe he indicated it was Darrell, D-A-R-R-E-L-L, -L, which, um, in speaking with him, and I can confirm seeing him today, um, Darrell Brooks or Daryl Brooks are one and the same. They are the same person. So, wait, is that the angle he's trying to use, like the pronunciation of it, the fact that he... I guess the way that he would pronounce his own name is, is Darrell, but they're calling him Daryl, so he's saying, I don't consider, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's not the extent of, like, why he's saying that. He just doesn't want to be associated with his own name, but I wonder if that's what he's actually, <laughs> I don't know. I, I need to well, stop trying to make sense of stuff you guys told me. It's really no point evidence. to it. Um, that was collected in the downtown area during the parade, capturing a picture of the person who drove the red SUV through the parade. Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, ma'am, I did. And you said you saw that? Yes, I did. I'm going to ask that Exhibit 120, which has been previously admitted to evidence, be published for the jury. Go ahead. Is that the photographic evidence that you just testified to? Objection. Overruled. Yes, ma'am, it is. And do you recall approximately was this um, the car being driven while the parade, in the midst of the parade, after the parade, or before the parade, if you know? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. So the photo we're looking at right here is right in the middle of the parade. So right now, the vehicle is within the parade route while the parade is ongoing. And were you able to positively identify the driver of that vehicle? Yes, ma'am, I was. Overruled. Who is the driver of that vehicle? The driver of the vehicle is Daryl Brooks. Thank you. Approximately how long um, you don't this exhibit? I am, yes. Thank you. How long were you at the substation? Probably about 
two to two and a half hours. <laughs> Why were you there versus anywhere else? So at this particular time, the department was in a transition. Um, our original building was under construction. Um, the building we were primarily working out of did not have a booking room, did not have a place to, uh, to take prisoners, so we had to go down to the substation instead of our, our own actual police department. Other than collecting the information that you had previously um, told us about, including emergency contact information, name, things like that, what else were you doing at the substation? Objection, meeting. Overrule the witness and answer. Uh, mainly at that time, just waiting for further information as to, to what was going to be done next. Like I say, the scene was um, very, very chaotic. Um, I know there were, there were so many victims out there, they didn't even have enough ambulances to transport them all. Um, so officers, it took, I feel like probably hours to really get it under control. Um, so I was just waiting on more information from um, Detective Casey, who had been assigned as lead to determine what steps would be appropriate next. Um, as just being there with Mr. Brooks and, and making sure he was safe and remained in custody, I, I didn't have a real good idea due to the chaos of what was going on away from where I was. Now you had testified about some of the property that was recovered from the defendant. Um, and you stated that one of the items was a card in the name of Erica Patterson. Do you recall that? Objection. He did not say who was in the name of. Sustained. Please um, rephrase. Actually, if we can pull up exhibit 172 again. Objection. Hearsay. And, there's no question yet, but. And if you so can we'll zoom in on the Georgia EBT card. Whose name is on that card? Erica Patterson. Lady. Overruled. Go ahead, you can answer that again. Erica Patterson. Did you, at the time that you were at the substation, have any information regarding an Erica Patterson and her relationship to Daryl Brooks? Objection that I don't consent to being called their name. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Objection is hearsay. Overruled. Not at that time, no. Did you later learn of a relationship between the defendant and Erica Patterson? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, I did. And what was that relationship? Objection, leading. <clears throat> Overruled. Uh, Ms. Patterson was a <laughs> significant other or girlfriend to Mr. Brooks and mother of one of his children. Objection, not girlfriend. Overruled. The jury will disregard that last <clears throat> statement as Mr. Brooks is not. So wait, I thought you weren't Daryl Brooks. How can you speak for him in that, in that, <clears throat> excuse me. How can you speak for him in that capacity? I thought you, <laughs> he's already, it's like I said in the last, in the last video, I think he can't even clear up certain things, but I guess at this point he just couldn't take it anymore. When you're talking about, you know, a woman that he wants to control so very badly, because you know how he was with Erica, like he, it was very sick in the way that he, you could tell he's one of these types of people where it's like he wants to be in absolute control of like the woman that he's dating. I'm testifying at the moment. Well, keep it true. Now when you make contact with Ridiculous man. Daryl Brooks at, or while you're making contact he with Daryl Brooks at the substation, did he complain of any injuries? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. I think you the may prosecution answer. is trying to be funny at this point. Yes, ma'am. He did. He I did hear the last thing, but I believe it was commentary. So just state your objection, and I'll rule on it. It's been overruled. You may answer. Yes, ma'am. He did. He complained of two injuries: one to his knee, but primarily and mostly of an injury to what was his right shoulder. Did he say how that occurred? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, he did. Mr. Brooks told us that his shoulder was injured when he was arrested, indicating the arresting officers slammed him to the ground. Did you have the opportunity at any point in this investigation to review body camera footage um, 
from Officer Rebecca Carpenter? Yes, ma'am. And that was at the, the residence where the defendant was taken into custody? Yes, ma'am, it was. Did you see any um, unlawful use of force on the defendant during that time? Objection, you're safe. Overrule the witness may answer. No, ma'am. In fact, there was no force used at all. Mr. Brooks was given um, verbal directions by officers to get down onto the ground, and he did so entirely on his own power. Based upon his complaints, however, was the decision made to transport him um, for medical <coughs> clearance? Yes, ma'am. And where did you transport the defendant? <coughs> um, Waukesha Memorial Hospital. Do you know approximately what time you arrived there? I believe, I don't remember the exact time. It was sometime, I believe it was between about 8 and 9 p.m. Upon entering, did, who was with you and Mr. Brooks? Objection. I don't consent to being called a man who's leading the witness. Um, overruled as to both. You may answer. Detective Ben Stern. Okay. Was he partnering with you in this part of the investigation? Yes, ma'am, he was. Okay. And when you entered the hospital, what observations, if any, did you make? Um, entering the hospital, we, we escorted um, Mr. Brooks, you know, to a room so that he could um, receive medical clearance. Uh, I know there were some individuals from the parade that were injured in nearby rooms. I didn't really see many of them, but I knew they were close by. Um, so we escorted Mr. Brooks into a room, trying to keep away from the victim so as to not uh, right. make the incident any more tension filled than it already was. And that's absolutely disgusting too. He's pretending to be injured and they take him to the hospital where he's using up, you know, medical personnel. Like they, they could be tending to people that were actually injured, but instead they have to deal with his fake injuries. And like the hospital, from what they described like earlier during the trial, the hospitals were completely full of like victims from the parade. So they're probably, you know, the waiting room in the ER is like completely full, but yet he's taken up, you know, the time of medical personnel that could be dealing with those people and helping them. Like it's- How busy was it at the hospital when you brought Mr. Brooks? Once again, like I- well, Overruled, the witness may answer. The levels of loneliness- um, extremely, there were, there were victims Due to the mass amount of casualties, many of which, you know, survived but still needed extensive medical attention, um, it was very busy. Many of the victims were, were taken to alternate hospitals because Waukesha Memorial could not handle the, the amount of patients that were coming in. Jeez, man. Now, <clears throat> approximately how long did you spend with Mr. Brooks at Waukesha Memorial Hospital. Objection, I was consent to being called that Over Probably about four hours. Is that addition to the time that you would have spent with him at the substation? Objection. Yes, ma'am. Leading. Overruled. What was his demeanor? Um, extremely calm. If I could, I would describe it, I guess, to put it in context for the court, very similar to mine right now. Conversations I had with him um, as far as getting his identification info and, and such he, he talked to me as, as calmly as I'm speaking now um, based on his body language his tone of voice his attitude um, he'd have never known he had done something or was in custody for having done something so serious did he ask you why he was in custody um, at the substation yes and what did you tell him? At that point, I simply told Mr. Brooks it was a loitering investigation and possible disorderly conduct. Now, you just testified that he was a suspect in the parade mass casual casualty incident. Why didn't you tell him that? Um, at that time, I didn't want to make Mr. Brooks, one, overly anxious. Um, two, there was a lot of information. Initially, I, I still didn't know. Um, it was 
initially, you know, as part of the chaos, I believe at one point we were actually looking for as many as four, as four people. So I didn't know how deeply he was or was not involved. It was believed that um, and known that he was somehow involved and knew something. So before I even address those issues, one, I wanted to make sure I knew all the facts and had as much information as I could, um, more than anything for the integrity of the case. When you talk about the integrity of the case um, and your discussions with him, did the defendant appear to know what was going on around him? When I say that, I guess, was he aware of where he was, who you were, things like that? Objection speculative. Um, as to the way it was rephrased in the second half of that, I will allow it. You may answer. Yes, yes he did. He seemed, uh, he was alert. His, when asked questions like, for example, his about phone number, his emergency contact, the answers were consistent with the question asked. He did not have slurred speech. He did not show any signs of being under the influence or in mental crisis. Did your opinion change at any time while you were with him on November 21st? Objection, vague. Overruled, you may answer. No, it did not. Now, during the four hours that you were at the hospital, were you, um, do you continue to complain about shoulder pain? Yes, he did. Were his actions always consistent with his expression of the pain in the shoulder? Objection, speculative. Oh, <coughs> my answer. No, they were not. Can you describe for the jury what you mean by that? Objection, speculative. <coughs> how, how can he know how somebody's body is feeling? Um, <coughs> overruled, he may answer given as long as he answers with his understanding. Or observations is observations. what I was saying. Thank you. I think that's what you said. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So, oh, Mr. Brooks, when he, he would speak to me throughout um, the evening, he would move his arms about, he'd put them out to his side, he'd move them back and forth, he'd raise them up and down. Um, he was talking about being in severe pain, but I would describe the way he'd move his arms and such as, as basic body mannerisms. Um, right and basic interpersonal interactions. He, his hands, his arms, everything moved completely normally when we would speak. Um, there was no favoring of that shoulder or anything to indicate other than what he was saying through physical action that there was any type of injury there that I observed. Now at some point, I strike that. During this time that you were with him and he was getting medically cleared, first of all, did he get medically cleared? Yes, he did. He didn't oh, need to be... Oh, hold on. Overrule, oh, his answer may stand. Do you need any treatment while at the hospital? No, he was checked out. The doctor came in and looked at his shoulder. I do not believe any medications were given. There may have been... I believe they took an x-ray to check it, but he was ultimately cleared and turned over to police custody. And during the time that you were with him while he was getting medically cleared, what type of conversation were you having? Was it a general conversation or were you talking to him about the, um, the loitering? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. The conversation was, was general. Uh, Mr. Brooks asked several times if I would give him more information as to why he was in custody and I would continue to tell him it was for the loitering violation. But the conversations were mostly, we talked about sports, um, the Green Bay Packers had played that day. We talked about the game. He, I remember him telling me that baseball was his favorite sport um, and things of that nature. He was upset that the Packers had lost the game. So it was basically, it was general conversation not related to why he was specifically in custody. At some point, right. did you decide that you were going to try to talk to the defendant about um, at least the loitering incident. Yes, ma'am, I did. The witness may answer. Do you know approximately what time that took place? 11.04 p.m. And how did you approach this interview? You've now been with Mr. Brooks for um, maybe five hours, would that be fair? Yes. How did you decide to approach this interview with him? Objection leading. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. 
I just explained to Mr. Brooks that I simply wanted to speak with him about uh, why he was in the neighborhood where he was discovered that night, what was going on, um, what led to him being there, um, and that I was just looking to have answers to that if he was willing to provide them. And did you, was Mr. Brooks <coughs> in a room that uh, had the ability to record the conversation that you had with him? Objection, I don't consent to being called down there. Overruled, you may answer. No, not, not in the manner we would if we were at our typical police department. So our police department would have a, a camera mounted in the corner that would record audio and video. They did have a security camera, but it had no audio capability. So what did you do? I utilized uh, my department-issued phone and um, recorded the audio of the interview that way. Okay. So you had the audio on your phone and the visual, or there was a visual recording, is that true? Yes, yeah, so the audio was on my phone and then the visual recording was through the hospital security system. Bless you. So they didn't, they didn't marry up with one another, correct? I mean, no. in terms of, I should strike that. Um, you couldn't play the audio with the visual, there are two different recordings. Yes. Okay. Who else was with you during this interview? At that time, Detective Ben Stern from my department was with me, <laughs> as well as two federal agents from the FBI, Agent Mary Davidson and Je Agent Jeremy, I believe it's Pilachowski. Why were they there? So the FBI came involved in the investigation early on because we were not certain at that point whether or not this was a uh, terrorist incident. So how did it work? Were they in the room and then Mr. Brooks was brought into the room or how did that work? Objection, I don't consent to being called that name and is leading the witness. Um, over the list, so the name sustained us to the form of the question. How did you all get into the same room? So I was in the room waiting for Mr. Brooks. Mr. Brooks was brought from another room by Detective Stern. At this point, the audio recording on my phone was already running. <coughs> um, I believe the two FBI agents were with me in the room, and then, like I say, Mr. Brooks was escorted in by uh, Detective Stern. Okay, so this is the detective that actually conducted the interview. So I saw a lot of people talking about this in the comment section. Um, people telling me to just react to the interview itself or the interrogation. But I figured it was going to come up at some point, so that's why I was just holding off on looking at that. But I wonder if they're going to actually play it here in a second. We got like 10 minutes Did left. Did you introduce so. yourselves? Well, you had been with Mr. Brooks previously, pre correct? Objection. Yes, I had. This cross exam is going to be insane. Oh, well, he may answer. Yes, I had. Okay. Had he been introduced to Detective Stern already? Yes, he had. Okay. And how about the two FBI agents? It was at that point that they introduced um, themselves to Mr. Brooks. What was his reaction to that when they introduced themselves? Objection, rather busy. Overall, he may answer. I'm very surprised. He um, he said the word. FBI, you know, in the form of a question, I could tell his tone was very surprised. It wasn't as calm as he had been. He seemed concerned, uneasy, and um, within about a minute after stating that, he questioned the agents further as to whether they were really FBI agents, and you know, he was surprised to see them there, and he had never actually seen an FBI agent before, so he was definitely surprised, and I could tell he was uncomfortable. Did you record the entire conversation you had with the defendant? Yes, the, um, at that point, all that is on recording. The, the, at that point, yes. And have you had the opportunity to review that recording prior to today, to today's date? I have. Um, I would like to um, admit Exhibit 81 for the court. It is the audio interview of the defendant. 
that took place on November 21st, 2021. It's previously been addressed by this court. Objection. I'm excited well, to hear this. How long it is again? Um, Your Honor, the entire video is 25 minutes approximately. I'm asking to play from 4 minutes and 25 seconds to 14 minutes and 25 seconds approximately. Well, it would be 10 minutes. Um, I presume you'll have questions regarding that once you play it? Correct. All right. Uh, given that it's just before 5 o'clock, I'm going to stop for the day. We can pick up with this uh, tomorrow. Oh, man. Um, it feels like I was literally just left on a cliffhanger right now. And I will have our instruction for the jurors. All right. That feels like a cliffhanger of a movie right there. All right, so day eight was yet another day of uh, Daryl fumbling his way through pretty much the entire thing. Now I'm really excited about day nine. Uh, we're gonna get into the interrogation footage. That's ridiculous. His shoulder was just fine, but he's moving his arm. This man is, like I said, he's a real life cartoon character. I don't even know how else to explain it. I mean, of course, what he did is not cartoonish by any means, like his evil stuff but i just want to say thank you all so much for sticking with me through yet another day of this trial and if you enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe hope you did something good for somebody today hope somebody did something good for you and i will catch you guys in day nine